Hafide Guam, Guahusi Kalin Sinica's Paris Adjoin Region Marianas. This is a special segment of Island Images as we commemorate Guam's Liberation Day. We had an opportunity and the honor to sit down with Mr. and Mrs. Alvarez as they shared their memories about how life was on Guam during the war. This is their story. We were at mass, and we heard planes coming in. What I saw was about nine or twelve, in a, like a squadron, you know, flying together, low altitude, very low. I could see the flag, but I didn't know who it belonged to, because I didn't know what the Japanese flag was. At the church, they already bombed Upper Harbor. This war started on December 8, 1941. The, the priest told us, we were in mass, and the priest told us to go home, take all the necessary things you need to survive, and run and hide somewhere. We were so scared, and uh, we, of course, it was just so much commotion as to where would we go to stay, you know? Uh, how are we gonna get there, and uh, would we be all right? So it, it's just questioning in my mind whether we would be safe. The Japanese took my, our only cow, we had one cow, and uh, they took it down. And my dad went down to plead with them, that's the only cow we have, please return it. And this is time when they were beating them up with sticks, bamboo, tanantongan. And I was so mad, I picked up a rock, and there was an old gentleman by the name of Pedro Francisco. Uh, I picked up a rock. I wanted to throw it at that Japanese beating my dad up, and he helped me. He said, son, we'll all die if you do this. We'll all die. The other one was when they uh, forced people, they would round out people to watch the beheading of our own people and you can't say you know you got it you they told us you have to look you have to watch this is their way of showing us you know we can make example out of this one my mother was beaten up because she was sick one day and she didn't go to work for the japanese and they beat, beat her beat her so bad that she was urinating on herself that was devastating to us. And when the American took over, you know, came, uh, we, we also have to get ready and start marching down to uh, Bradley. Bra Bradley. Uh -huh. We walk again. We were hungry. And uh, we were, there's no. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they did not advise us to get food or anything, you know. We just said, they just told us to get ready and help the, uh, go with the people that were marching down there. And that was a long march. I was sick, really. I had the flu. And so my uncle carried me all the way down. People were starving, man. We, we ate uh, little breadfruit, not quite mature yet, you know, coconuts. Baja, you know, wild bananas, anything that we can find people uh, eat. When I saw the Marines, they gave me a Hershey bar of candy, chocolate, I'll never forget. But I wanted food, and you know, you know our culture, you don't ask, you know. But later on, they gave us sea rations, you know, those canned war uh, meal and I said to myself here are the Americans liberating us 
We were American nationals before the war. The U.S. Democratic form of government is not the most perfect. But during my travels when I joined the military, it is the best. The liberation seems to be something that all people should really remember. Remember that you never know the value of freedom until you lose it. Mr. and Mrs. Alvarez says that their life has been very blessed, regardless of the atrocities they faced during the war. Thank you for watching Guam, and please stay tuned as we bring you more stories of the war from our families who were there.